When we came up with the name Dyke TV, it was a working title, but it really felt like the energy of the show and the direction of the show and the personality of the show fit more with Dyke TV than any other title that we came up with. Because we were about, our show was about being really out, kind of in your face um, television. And, and Dyke TV um, was out and in your face. Dyke TV is still the one and only lesbian television show in, as far as I know, the world. I think the difference between then, in 1993 and now, is I think at the time there was a sense of urgency and also a sense that if we, we had to do this, we had to make this show, so people were very, very motivated. It, it wasn't like you came into an institution that already existed and sort of worked along with it. It's like you created the institute, we created the institution that we wanted, and I, an institution is definitely a stretch. We wanted to make a television show, and it happened by the, you know, uh, energy and hard work of a large group of really devoted people, and it was very hard to do. We're doing a dyke march because we want to go beyond visibility into having our own distinct political identity, our own lesbian political agenda. We have issues that are lesbian issues, and we have a lesbian viewpoint. The idea for Dyke TV was Ana Maria Simos. She is a lesbian playwright in downtown um, who was very active at the time in the Lesbian Avengers. Lesbian Avengers came out of an idea, okay, we've been working in all these political movements, now we're going to have a political movement that's about us, where we're like in the forefront and it's, you know, we're, we're, we're doing it for ourselves. I mean, that's what the Lesbian Avengers, I think, came out of doing tons of activism. All these dykes who had been working in different political movements, the anti-war movement, I mean, the anti-nukes movement, the, um, you know, the um, AIDS movement, and different groups, and, and decided they were still going to do that other work, but they wanted a group that was going to address lesbian issues. This march is um, lust for power. We want to express our desire, both sexual liberation, political liberation, liberation on all fronts. We have a big bet that we made to symbolize that lesbianism is not just a bedroom issue. We're bringing ourselves, our power, our desire out to the streets and out in your faces. In 1993, when Dyke TV was founded, the New York City was much, much more active politically. ACT UP was really active. The Lesbian Avengers was, were doing like weekly actions. And it just seemed like there needed to be a lesbian program that could, you know, cover all the events that were happening. Hi, I'm Jocelyn Taylor, and you're watching Dyke TV. Dyke TV. Television to incite, subvert, provoke, and organize. And now, the news. Dozens of lesbian activists slowed rush hour traffic into Tampa today, protesting hate crimes in the Bay Area. What's the problem, officer? By stopping us, they're giving us the opportunity just to put together a big performance with a lot of posters and make sure that everybody who drives by know who we are. I have nothing against homosexuals. I, I, I don't want to give that impression. They, they have a right to their privileges. I don't think they have a right to solicit my grandchildren. In the early 90s, right around 1992, Pat, Pat Buchanan came on television for the uh, Republican National Convention and said, we're in a cultural war. We were fighting to get basic human rights and basic civil rights uh, in this country, and there was a serious backlash. In the early days, they put me on camera with a very particular slot uh, called Ann Northrup Mouths Off, where I did commentaries that were meant to be sort of loud and outrageous. Screw you, Bill Donahue. Dick the hell with you. Michael Douglas. My strategy go to hell a lesbian only civil rights. Who the hell do you the think you are? Assholes. Hey, did you hear the great news? This bar in Florida went from straight to gay, fired its straight waitresses. The waitresses went off to court in the legislature and said, hey, we need laws protecting people on the basis of sexual orientation. <laughs> We're going to get civil rights in Florida. This is a fabulous strategy. This is going to solve all our problems. This is how we're going to get civil rights laws in every state and nationally. Fire straight people. And so I'd work myself up into a particular rant about something. Uh, 
I remember one commentary in particular that we shot here at my house in my kitchen where I had a knife in my hand and slammed it into a uh, cutting board in anger at something, probably something some men had done. We have a particular worldview that uh, is not often understood or heard. You have a right to talk about your life and to have it as respected and to have people as interested in it as anything else. Tolerance. I'm not tolerating them anymore. And I'm not tolerating straight men who are voyeuristic about my sex life. I'm not tolerating straight women who are uncomfortable with me in the room. The hell with all of them. The, what are the limits of tolerance? Here are the limits of my tolerance. Fuck you. I have a girl, but I like to look. The show is approximately 26 minutes. Um, the segments range, you know, usually they're three to five, five to seven minutes. Occasionally we have longer pieces. Um, the show is a magazine style format, so you've got art. <laughs> News. Lesbians have been discharged from the military in very different ways from the way gay men have. A great example of this is Deborah Glick here in New York. She is our only open lesbian in Albany, in our state capital. We've got everything that's going on in the queer community. The baby boom was really was really beginning. Although certainly there were there were lesbian and gay people having children before then, um, the tremendous upsurge was just beginning right around that time. I performed. At first, it was for fun, um, and then it turned into a gender odyssey. Before I did my first competition, I thought that I was going to be a nervous wreck. As soon as like, you get up there, it's like your heart starts pumping. Adrenaline is just. Beautiful drug. And you can be a king or you can be a queen, and it doesn't matter what your gender is because gender is so broad. We're taking it to the streets with Dyke TV. We also have producers all over the country, and occasionally we get stuff that's international. Um, and we really try and, and not, we are in New York, but we, we try and really report on what's going on in the rest of the country. We have producers meetings. It's a way of getting people involved. Uh, people come that have ideas of their own, or they just sort of want to help out with ideas that we have, and they get involved in that way. I took the basic video course. Before I took that course, I didn't, I never picked up a camera. People coming in here and feeling like they have a voice and that they can cover issues that are important to them and it's going to be on TV and that somebody actually cares about it and that somebody wants to see it and see what, you know, their life. Uh, and they can take control over representing themselves. Hi, I'm Ani. You're watching Dyke TV. Good thing. And if you want to get involved, show your support, call the number you see at the end of the program. Simple as that. But a thing, but a boom, you're there. Hi, this is Martina Navratilova, and you are watching Dyke TV. You're watching Dyke TV. You're watching Dyke TV. So our fan base is um, fairly broad. We get anything from a 15-year-old in Kansas City, Missouri, who's seen Dyke TV for the first time and just seen Dykes for the first time, and you know her world is forever changed. And then we get the um, the older lesbian couple that lives in the middle of nowhere on a mountain that you know gets Dyke TV at 5:30 in the morning, and they wake up every five, every morning at 5:30 in the morning to watch us because they love us. Um, and then we have our uh, our gay male population that watches us and absolutely loves the show and you know just writes about how happy they are when you know there's like a segment on gay male cheerleading or something like that um and then you know we have our our uh, our lesbian separatists that watch the show that uh that get angry when we have gay male cheerleaders on the show because of course 
uh, the queer community in a lot of ways, and that in that respect is just like um, mainstream hetero community in that, you know, gay men are still men and they still are in the limelight and they still get most of the media attention is on men. I think that the political moment of identity politics is over. I think that now we're seeing much more, especially with the war uh, against Iraq, that we're seeing people wanting to come together more on progressive grounds, and that's where Dai TV would fall in the mix. We might be entering a time where there is another backlash that we're going to have to mobilize against. I think the climate for gay people in general has just improved dramatically since Dyke TV started. I mean, there wasn't, like I said before, there wasn't one gay character on television when Dyke TV was founded. Um, I mean, we're still majorly discriminated against. I mean, we're not allowed in the army, not that I care. We're not allowed to get married, which I don't really care about either. But I mean, these are fundamental civil rights issues that, that, um, that, that we're faced with. Feelings in this country have changed incredibly in terms of, in terms of the way the society views lesbians there has been a huge shift. Now it's not perfect, it's still you know, not so great. But take from when 1986, from when I came out, until now, and there has been an enormous change. You can be out in high school without getting ostracized. There's been huge changes, and I feel like Dyke TV it was a part of making those happen. You know, we basically led the way, and then Ellen DeGeneres came out, and then stars started to come out. You know, when Ellen came out, it was scandalous. When Rosie came out, it was like ho-hum. So to the extent that people see us, I think that it will become ho-hum, which is really all we want. I came out in, in the 1950s, and if anyone had told me then that there would be public figures like Ellen DeGeneres or Kay D. Lang, I, I would have thought that I'd died and gone to heaven. But of course, it, it's a tiny segment of the population, and that's what um, America, in general gets to see. They don't get to see the nitty gritty of, of our lives. And that's why uh, things such as Dyke TV are so indispensable. There's just not enough of Dyke TV. It, it doesn't get around to enough cities. It, it has, I believe, uh, 50 outlets around the United States. I can't get it in, in my city. I, I can get it on uh, the internet. We get a lot of traffic on our website, and we have about 200 segments archived on the internet, which you can watch at your convenience. People can watch parts of the show and have access to never-before-seen footage of the queer community over the past 10 years. We've been at so many important events um, and covered so many important events. We need to see images of ourselves. Uh, we, we need to create that kind of present for ourselves and that kind of history for ourselves. Hi, I'm Kate Clinton and uh, you're watching one of my favorite channels, Dyke TV. I can't get enough of it. I, 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 I want to buy things from it. I want to buy little lesbians. I want to take them home. I just, I can't wait for their fun drive. Whoa, they're excellent. So keep watching, keep supporting the best Dyke TV. Yeah.